Good afternoon, good evening, maybe even good morning. Depending where you're watching this, I want to welcome all of you once again to another one of our District Innovation Team Live events. I am Mr. Garcia with the Innovation Station, and I am so happy that you have joined us wherever you're at. I want to thank our amazing station partners who continue to support us in our virtual environment, the Qualcomm Think of It Lab, the Chula Vista Elementary School District, the city of Chula Vista, and of course, the Chula Vista Public Libraries. Behind the scenes, I have a few helpers, Mr. Bruder and Mrs. Hughes, who will be moderating the chat and cannot wait to take your questions. Also, we are going to have another Kahoot game for you, so pay close attention to what you're going to be hearing today. All right, are you ready? All right, let's do this. So today, we will be focusing on how engineers are using robotics to clean up pollution. Now, I find this topic fascinating and stay with us because we will be looking at some young engineers who are already making a difference with robotics and pollution. So one of my most favorite activities to do here in San Diego is to visit the ocean and then just enjoy the beauties of the water. However, most recently, one of my close friends introduced me to our local fish market that takes place on Saturday mornings located on the marina in Seaport Village. And there I've had the chance to talk to local fishermen who usually spend the entire night before catching local and fresh fish from the Pacific Ocean and Baja California. However, one of my biggest concerns over the last few years has been ocean pollution. The pollution taking place in our waters impact our ecosystem the well-being of all plant and ocean life. And I recently heard a report from BBC News that many sea creatures mistakenly identify plastic gloves as food, causing harm to their bodies. This report further stated that if ocean life is harmed, eventually the resources that we need would be contaminated and could eventually harm us. So to learn more about the negative impacts of water pollution, please watch this video with me on the next slide. Now, as we watch this video, I need your help with this. Please answer the following question in the chat box. Identify one way the ocean is being harmed by the pollution. Make sure you're paying attention. You never know if some of these facts may appear on the Kahoot. All right, you ready? Check this out. So this leads us to this question. What kinds of careers do you think can help prevent or clean up pollution? Well, I'm glad you asked because we're going to take a look at that right now. So we're going to look at what an engineer does to what an environmental, environmental engineer does. But before we do that, I would like to know, are there any engineering jobs that you are interested in? So do we have any future engineers out there? If so, please write those in the chat for me because I would love to know what engineering jobs you are interested in. All right, so all engineers do the following. They collect information, they identify possible solutions to a problem, develop models and prototypes that can be tested, analyzed, and improved. Specifically, what an environmental engineer does, they research, design, plan or engage in duties to prevent, control, and solve environmental challenges. Their work may include waste treatment, site remodeling, or pollution control technology. So as I wait for those future engineering jobs to roll through the comments, you may be wondering what other engineer jobs help the environment. As mentioned, we have many engineering jobs, but we also have a civil engineer. What they do is they focus on working for their local cities. They work on roadways, buildings, and city operated infrastructures. We also have logistic engineers, meaning that they focus on the supplies for a project. How much does a certain project need? Where will they gather those supplies? And lastly, and honestly, I'm kind of biased towards this one, is my favorite, the computer systems engineer. These engineers build computer programs when it comes to the software and hardware aspects of technology. 
They ensure that technology can function with all other projects that other engineers do. All right, so this is a good time, Mr. Bruder, to check in on those student responses um, or if there are any other questions or comments from the audience. Hey, Mr. Garcia. Yeah, we got some great responses from the question that you asked earlier about some of the things in that video that yeah. might be harming our oceans. Right, okay. So we have some responses from our attendees, such as Charlize, who mentioned litter is one litter. of the things. Good. Um, also, also from Josiah about oil and oil spills. Interesting. Yeah, that is very, very common, especially a lot sometimes in the Gulf Coast. Yes, and Christian also mentioned the, the fact that sometimes people dump trash in the water. So again, yeah. with the litter. Yeah. And uh, another one was uh, chemicals. Mm, that is true. That is true also. So it's very important to see that that's the human impact and the, the influence that we have towards a pollution. That's so cool that the students recognize that. Thank you so much for sharing, Mr. Bruder. No problem. And you know what, Mr. Garcia, there, there's a pattern I noticed there. Most of those things are done by humans. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true. Those are things that humans have control over and have they can make a conscious decision of how they will dispose or take care of extra materials like that. So very, very uh, great observation that you had there. Awesome. All right. Well, keep those comments coming in, everyone, because I am looking forward to still hearing some more shout outs and seeing what you're gathering from this lesson today. So here's some good news. Let's look at some local and young engineers that are making a difference with utilizing robotics and cleaning up pollution here in our San Diego oceans. That's right. We're not going somewhere else. We're staying local here in San Diego. All right, let's check this video out. This is really cool. How did those young engineers program and create such a cool device? Well, here's a start. Probably use something like the engineering design process. The engineering design process is a design thinking habit of mind that allows us to solve problems and create a solution. Have you ever been faced with the problem? If so, maybe using this guide could help you solve it. So speaking of problems, let's dive into our engineering design process by identifying the problem and even solution. So our problem states the following. 12.7 million tons of plastic waste are washed into the ocean every year. Reports estimate that nearly 1 million seabirds and 100,000 marine mammal die from ingesting this plastic every year. These are statistics from 2018. Our solution to this problem will be the following. Design and build a device that would help eliminate plastic waste and other harmful items from the beaches and or oceans. So that's right. Stay with us long enough because we are literally going to build a device today, okay? So going back to this, our engineering design process, we have identified the problem, ocean pollution, and the solution, design and build a device that would help eliminate plastic waste and other harmful items from the beaches and or oceans. So I know what my problem is and I know the solution that I'm aiming for, but I still have some questions. So this is the part of the engineering design process where asking good questions come into play, all right? So do me a favor. If you have a question about the problem or the solution, go ahead and write that down in the chat box for me, please. But here are some possible questions that you could be wondering and that I'm wondering as we're getting ready for this. What is the most common type of waste in the ocean? Uh, what previous devices have been developed? Uh, how can our devices be waterproof? What materials are we going to use? That's a good one that we get a lot. And how much time will it take to build? Hey, that's also another important one as well. All right, so now we have some questions in place. The next phase is going to be the imagine. So when we're looking at the imagine phase, this is what we need to do. What ideas from my prior knowledge do I have that would inspire me to build something? Well, 
I've seen robotic fish under the water, but I've also seen robots that pick up trash. However, I must also think of what kinds of materials I have at home. And I know, one, I have a lot of cardboard and different forms of boxes. Um, so how would my device look if it was made from cardboard? Hmm. You know what? I think this is a good time to plan. And uh, I want to plan my ideas of what my final project could possibly be. And you know what? If testing goes well, I want to take on the role of that engineer and find ways to improve my device. So let's get to the planning phase. So here we are. What are we building? All right, so I'm thinking to myself that I want to build something that I can pick up trash with by the ocean. However, I'll, I want it to be efficient enough like a call, uh, like the claw of an ultra trash truck. That's exactly what I'm calling this right here. I like this photo when I found it. I'm like, you know what? This is not a traditional trash truck. This is an like ultra trash truck, all right? So for all my primary students that are watching today, this is a cool truck. I think the best plan would be to build a robotic claw that can pick up trash. Here we go. Yep, that's what we're going to do. A robotic trash claw. Now check this out. That's how it's going to look. We're going to use cardboard and also we're going to either use fasteners or string, maybe even paper clips. We'll talk about materials, but that's what we're going to make a robotic claw. So here's a plan of what we need. We have our must haves and our may haves. So let me share what we can use. Cardboard. Now, I want to make a big disclaimer here. If you are going to use cardboard, your robotic claw will be thicker, which is really cool, but it may take a little longer to cut. Okay? You just have to be patient if that is the case. All right? I'm just letting you know right now. Next are fasteners. As you can see here in the photo, they're gold. Sometimes they have different colors. Scissors are also important, as well as rulers. However, if you do not have any of those, there are some alternatives that you can be using, and that is a cereal box. If you don't have cereal, you might have a granola bar boxes or any type of snack boxes. Honestly, those work as well. Um, a string or paper clips instead of the fasteners. Also, if you have a hole puncher, that would also work, but if you do not, you can either use a toothpick to poke holes because we're going to need that, all right? All right, are you guys ready? Are you all ready to create and test our device? Now, as before we move forward, I want to remind you again, please be patient. Remember to pause this video. I know we are live, but the truth is you can actually pause this video at any given point in time. All right. Or you can watch it again later on our YouTube channel and we'll give you the link for that later on. All right. I'm ready to start building. I hope you are too. Okay. So as we can see, we have our supplies already here. And before I get started, I want to show you actually how the end result already looks like. All right. So here is the robotic cardboard claw that I made with thick pieces of cardboard. But I also want to show this, so those of you that are wondering, well, how are we going to use string? Well, I, I specifically put string on this aspect right here, on this little, these little holes to start off with, to show you that, yes, you can put string on the inside, okay? Um, and for some reason, if I needed to make the holes bigger, I, what I did earlier is I just put the toothpick inside and made the holes bigger to make sure that the string could fit inside. My suggestion would be, if you're going to use string, make a knot to start off with okay make a knot to start off with just like this and make sure it's a big knot because remember you're going to have to put the string inside the cardboard little hole okay that's what you're going to do and then after that i would suggest to cut it now you might be asking mr garcia your string is too long it's not as long well it's good enough to go inside the hole, and then once I pull it out, then I can make another knot right here. And you'll see that it becomes a lot smaller. 
But that's if you're going to be using string. This is an alternative, OK? Now, the other thing I want to bring up is this, is that, of course, you can see the difference between the cardboard that I'm using here, and then also I'm going to be using thinner cardboard from my cereal box right here. All right, this is from a Rice Krispies. It's not SpongeBob cereal. All right, I like Rice Krispies. Either way, uh, this is the difference on this. I will tell you that this took me a little longer to build, but I love it because the versatility and how long it can last is a lot, a little bit more structured than the other one. And of course, this is how an engineer would think, all right? So, of course, I have everything else. I have my toothpick in case I need that. I have my scissors here, I have my pen, I have my hole puncher, and I have my fasteners right over here as well. So, what you're going to want to do, and what I actually I should bring up also, is I don't have a ruler, so I actually got that thick piece of cardboard and try to create a makeshift ruler. So, as you can see, I'm even using alternatives to build my device. So, you're going to want to draw lines lengthwise along your cardboard about 1.25 inches apart. Now, notice this, is that most rulers are already 1.25 inches apart on this um, when you're looking at the width, okay? Um, this step is really, really easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw straight lines going down. And as I do that, I'm going to go ahead and ask Mr. Bruder, do we have any questions about materials or anything else, Mr. B, in the comments or Q&A section of our chat? Hey, Mr. Garcia. Yeah, Mrs. Hughes and I are going through that now. We do have uh, quite a few career ideas that people shared earlier, if, if now's a good time to share those. I would love to hear that, especially as I am trying to multitask here, so that'd be really cool. Well, the first career I have to share with you, I know is gonna be one of your favorites. I know it's one you teach about at the Innovation Station. Cleo and Eric both said they'd be interested in being robotics engineers. Nice, that is so cool. That's really cool, Cleo and Eric, robotics engineers. Okay, do we have another one? Yeah, we have a few more. Uh, another student shared that they would be interested in being the environmental engineer that you mentioned earlier. That is cool. And, and let's go ahead and I take think, one more before I move forward with the other instructions. Okay, and then I think because of the passion for helping animals, we had a few uh, students share like Callie and Tori and Aaron that they'd be interested in being a marine biologist. Very nice, a marine biologist. This is really cool. I'm really inspired by all these future environmental engineers, software engineers, and marine biologists. This is awesome. The future is very bright, very, very bright, and in good hands. All right, so as I was listening to that, you all can see that I have my um, lines already separated right here. Now, I need to, I need to get this directly in half, uh, so I have two pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold this in half. Why well, try to measure it when you can do this? And now from there, on that line, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. So as I do this, I'm going to go ahead and cut my pieces. Um, I'm only going to cut four only because I'm going to make a smaller claw. If you want to make it longer, you can definitely cut all of them as well. And then you're going to notice a pattern in a few moments, a zigzag pattern that we're going to use that you can continue on if you want to make your claw a lot larger and longer as well. All right. So as I continue to cut this, Mr. Bruder, do we have any other students that have any other suggestions of careers or any other questions possibly? Okay, so we have some really interesting questions about Fred, that invention that you showed us earlier. Yeah, let's talk about Fred. Yeah, and you know what? I to be honest, I don't know if we have the answers to all of these, but I'd love to share them. And then maybe we could share a, a website later on that tells more about Fred so people can check out, check out uh, some of that information. Absolutely. Uh, one, of the question, yeah, one of the questions um, that came from Christina is about how much time does it take to collect that pollution from the ocean? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, another question was from Eric about where would that trash go after it gets picked up by the claw? Interesting. Okay. And and that might be about Fred, maybe about our invention as well. 
And then we also had more specific to what we're doing right now. How would we design our device to be waterproof from Jasmine? Okay. Those are great questions. And you know what? I really appreciate those questions because these are the kind of questions that engineers would ask. These are the kind of questions that makes you wonder, okay, what is happening out there? And that, I don't know about you, Mr. B, but I've noticed that in our time here with the Innovation Station, that questions are definitely better than answers. Definitely. All right, so now that we have this, if you noticed, I have one piece that's a lot thinner and I'm gonna just replace it with one that I already have made. Of course, if you have extra, just like I do here, you can do that. That's the nice thing about using this is that you're gonna have extra, but um, as what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just mimic. You do not have to be as precise to draw the holes. Um, if you want to, you can. And if you even look up a cardboard robotic claw on Bing or on Google or whatever search engine your computer uh, uses, um, you'll see that sometimes there are some students that actually are very, very precise. And they're definitely using that mathematical habit of mind when it talks about attention to precision. So that means that every single aspect of their claw is very, very detailed. But because of our time constraint today, I'm going to be a little bit more quicker than that. But you're going to see I'm going to go ahead and punch a hole through at least two of them. I tried to do three yesterday, and I will tell you that that was pretty hard. So if you're using thick cardboard, I would suggest um, doing one piece of cardboard at a time for this. And if you're going to use something else that's sharp, I would also advise make sure you have an adult present. Please do not try to do anything that's dangerous on your own, especially when it comes to poking holes inside um, any piece of paper or cardboard. Um, I will also say if you do not have any um, cereal boxes or anything but cardstock paper, that works as well. And, you're see, and you'll see, we're about maybe 70% done with our project. If you're wondering like, how much more of this are we gonna do? The reality is we're about 70% done. Now, pay close attention to this next part because it can be a bit challenging. Again, at any given point in our session, please pause the video. It's better to go slow and pay close attention to what we are about to do, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and move my pieces to the side. And I want you just to follow along with me as I go ahead and start building my robotic claw, okay? So the first one, I'm gonna make an X and you're looking like, Mr. Garcia, that looks like a capital X. Yeah, it does. And again, remember, I was kind of going a little quick on this. But with a ruler, and if I had a ruler, I could have measured it a little bit better. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open up my fastener And bam, I have my X right here. Step number two, I'm gonna add a piece and it's gonna look just like this one right here. And be very careful with these fasteners. I know they're kind of look, well, they're, they're not a big deal, but if you don't open it correctly, you don't want it to get stuck in your nail and all of a sudden something happens. So. Again, with anything else that's art, always just be careful, whether you're using hot glue, regular glue, or whatnot. This next piece, I'm gonna go ahead and put this part right here. And I'm, looks like I'm going to have to adjust, there you go. So, I'm gonna go ahead and add my fastener to this top part. And of course, try to find the hole in the middle where it meets insert the fastener here and look at you're starting to see the robotic claw take place and look at you can even get a little preview oh yeah it's already becoming mobile i'm getting excited all right next piece i'm going to add the bottom one and you're looking at like exactly like it's the pattern once you pick it up the pattern you're going to notice that it continues going forward And again, this 
top one. And then I'm going to add another fastener right here in the middle. And look at this. Isn't that cool already? But what I'm going to do is because I want to have some sort of bracket or some sort of like clasp to be able to hold it together and to grab that trash. I'm going to go ahead and insert my fasteners on the top and leave this one right here where it's on the top. So you're not going to go to the middle like the other ones. You're going to, it's almost like you have to kind of envision it. All right, I want, I need to have that claw. Now, again, also you'll notice that I didn't have the time to cut the little claws in there, but you are more than welcome to do that. Because we pretty much have like a phase one version of our robotic claw. And we're gonna still, we're not done yet with our engineering design process because there's a few more things that I wanna talk about. But look, there we go. Check that out. Now, this one, if you were timing it, I don't know, I would say it took me a good, maybe seven minutes, 10 minutes. This one right here, I will tell you this, this one actually took me a good hour to make. Just because I would say a good 30 minutes was invested into cutting the thick pieces of cardboard. Um, but as you can see, the results ended up being that it's a lot thicker. So you can use different forms of paper or different forms of cardboard as well. All right, so now this leads us to this next part and we need to go ahead and continue to talk about improving our design. We still have one more phase within our engineering design process. So now that we build our design, what could we improve on? So please answer the following question in the chat. What would you do to improve your design? So go ahead and do that for me. <clears throat> well, if I was building this with a foam board or maybe even wood, I would probably use bolts instead of fasteners. So that's something that I would improve. Also, because we love maker spaces and because we love art and design thinking and creating opportunities to get our hands messy, I would also utilize glue to stabilize that robotic arm. Some way, somehow, find a way to use glue, right? And lastly, for those of you that have had a chance to visit our stations, you know what I'm gonna talk about now. I would use an Arduino and a servo so I could computer code and actually make it robotic now. That's exactly what I would do. And as you can see, there's actually here in this photo, it's really cool, I found someone's already done it with an actual Arduino and a breadboard and of course the servo and made a robotic claw. Isn't that really cool? But hey, we started something from nothing today. So I'm really impressed and excited about that. Well, we did it. We accomplished the task of using our engineer design process in solving a problem and creating a solution. We went through all the steps mentioned, and now that leads us to the next thing that we are all waiting for. Are you ready for that? I don't know if you guys are ready. I don't know if anyone's ready for this. Actually, no, I think you all are ready. That's right, the Kahoot. So do me a favor. Remember, if you wanna play, you need to open up another window, not a tab, maybe even another browser. So if you're using Chrome, open up Edge or vice versa, or if Safari or whichever one, so that you can see the questions on one window and your answer buttons on another, okay? So here's the pin, 8238278. And Mrs. Hughes is gonna go ahead and put the link to kahoot.it and then right underneath that, she's gonna go ahead and add that pin just to make it a lot easier. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the Kahoot game. And we should start seeing some people joining in us in a few moments. So 823-8278. There we go, I love seeing this Rockstar Panda. There you are, silly Bobcat. Oh my gosh, now we go, here we go. So. Um, while we wait for this, Mr. Bruder, I don't know if there's anything you can share with me when it comes to even their more careers, um, if any students had any questions, maybe more contributions to what causes pollution, or even if some students were talking about what they would improve 
to either my design or do their design. So let's go ahead and use this moment as we wait for our friends to join us to just kind of hang out and talk. Hey, Mr. Garcia. Yeah, we have some ideas for how they could improve it already in. So I'd love to share those with you. Please. Um, from Jessiel that asked, why not build it out of metal instead? Uh -huh. Yes, that would be cool. Um, and, I, and actually, that, that, that was mentioned a few times. We also had another student who mentioned making their robotic claw um, more like a vehicle with waterproof wheels. Nice. And they would utilize tape. Wheels. Um, we also had a few people share about how they could make it. What, what are some ways that we could make it waterproof? I know you brought that up. So definitely some good brainstorming happening around that. Awesome. Uh, Isabella talked about making the parts more secure and tight so it doesn't fall apart or loosen over time. Okay. Uh, Ray also said something similar about making it more sturdy. Very nice. Yeah, I completely agree. I think those are all amazing ideas to improve it. Yeah, we have a few more. Uh, Dalen mentioned uh, also that like to build a, 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 some kind of way to filter those items out of the water. Okay. And uh, Jasmine also mentioned something that, that could float while picking up the materials in the water. So I have to... Yeah. They're taking our idea and turning it into some amazing things. That is so cool. That is really, really cool. That is awesome. So at this point, we have 133 and counting students coming in. So don't forget to go to Kahoot.it. Okay. And the game pin, one more time, is 823-8278. And Mr. Garcia, while we're waiting for a few more uh, of our attendees to jump in, I had a question yes. about something you mentioned. Absolutely. You showed an image for Improve where they use something called an Arduino and a servo. Can you tell us a little bit more about what those are? Yes. So um, if you've ever had a chance to visit our other stations that we have here, the hydro station or the energy station, um, what it is is the Arduino is like a small little motherboard. If you've ever seen a motherboard, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's like the internal part of a computer. It's usually green. And it has a lot of little wires and a lot of little holes that go inside. And what that Arduino does, it connects to power. And it also has different pins that send out different commands. And it also has a USB port that usually connects to a computer. And it also has software where you can code it. So that way you can control whatever you connect to it. You can control an LED light or a servo like the way we mentioned. Now a servo is, imagine a little black box with a helicopter propeller right on the top that spins 360 degrees around. So what we like to do is we like to teach students how to program the Arduinos and connect something to their servo. And yes, we literally here at the Innovation Station and at the other ones, we will use um, glue and put cardboard popsicle sticks. So that way it's almost as if you have a moving piece of device that's actually being manipulated by computer coding. So yeah, that's one of the highlights that we have within the innovation station. So hopefully that answered it very simply enough because I know it's a little of a, it's somewhat of a complex device, but in my take, I think anyone, even if you're in first grade or second grade, hey, even if you're in kindergarten, I'm more than sure that you could probably find a way to enjoy using our Arduino. I think you're right, Mr. Garcia, because I have seen some kindergartners in our innovation station doing some of that programming. That is so cool. So we have about 177 students so far, Mr. Bruder. How much more do you think? You know what? I know we have a few still joining, but yeah, I think we're ready to get started. we got a lot of people waiting for this Kahoot game. Okay, so let me, before we get started, let me just do one more announcement. The pin will be on the bottom. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't start yet. You can still start. You can still join the game. You will see the pin there at the bottom. All right. I am excited to start. Let's get the ball rolling. Using robotics to clean up pollution. Okay. So let's tune in to our first question. Which of the following is not a cause of water pollution? 
Is it red triangle, sewage, blue diamond, recycling, orange circle, oil spillage, or green square, trash? Once again, which of the following is not a cause of water pollution? Is it red triangle, sewage, blue diamond, recycling, orange circle, oil spillage, green square, trash? And again, everyone, if you're still watching and you cannot log in, kahoot.it, and the game pin is still there, 823-8278. So it's not too late to sign in. I am looking forward to see what you all respond to this. Which of the following is not a cause of water pollution? Red triangle sewage, blue diamond recycling, orange circle oil spillage, or green square trash. All right, in five seconds, we're gonna find out who's leading the cause, who's winning. That's right, recycling is not a cause of water pollution. If you recycle, then you are helping. You are finding a way to save our planet and also save all the ocean life in the water. Lively unicorn, that's right. We need more unicorns in 2021. There we go. All right, lively unicorn, congratulations. You are winning so far, but very, very tight. It's a very tight race. So how can you help clean up water pollution? Again, how can you help clean up water pollution? Red triangle, participate in a beach cleanup. Blue diamond, throw chemicals down the drain. Orange circle, leave your trash anywhere outside. A green square, overuse pesticides when gardening. How can you help clean up water pollution? Red triangle, participate in a beach cleanup. Blue uh, diamond, throw chemicals down the drain. Orange circle, leave your trash anywhere outside. Or green square, overuse pesticides when gardening. How can you clean up water pollution? Save the turtles, everyone. As you can see this, this is not a very, this is not a nice image. How can you clean up water pollution. All right, we're almost there. 15 seconds. All right, last few answers, everyone. Correct. Participate in a beach cleanup. That is awesome. 136, that is so good. Lively, oh, wow, look at this, Smiling Pigeon, you are winning, but you're not too far ahead from Smiley Condor or Expert Frog. This is, okay, there we go. All right, question number three. What kind of engineer is one that works with pollution? Is it Red Triangle, video game engineer? Is it the blue diamond, a mechanical engineer? Is it an orange circle, a civil engineer? Is it a green square, an environmental engineer? Don't forget, this is one of the main topics we talked about earlier. What kind of engineer is one that works with pollution? Is it a red triangle? Video game engineer, a blue diamond, the mechanical engineer, the orange circle, the civil engineer, or the green square, the environmental engineer. Which one of these is the kind of engineer that works with pollution? 
And this is really cool because some of you shared that you're interested in now becoming an environmental engineer. So what kind of engineer? Video game engineer, mechanical engineer, civil engineer, or environmental engineer. All right, we're getting very close to our finishing and that's right, 129 of you, environmental engineer. And um, some of you answered video game engineer. I mean, you could if you use recycled games. All right, so who do we have here? Wow, smiling pigeon and smiling condor. But Arctic Condor and Rockstar Panda are slowly catching up and glowing alpaca. That is so cool. I love alpacas, especially for my fellow sixth graders. You get to see them on your way to sixth grade camp. All right, two more questions left. What was the name of the device made by the young engineers from San Diego? Red Triangle, Edith. Blue Diamond, Jarvis. Orange circle, Fred, or green square, Friday. So what was the name of the device made by the young engineers from San Diego? Was it red triangle, Edith? Was it blue diamond, Jarvis? Was it orange circle, Fred? Or was it Green Square Friday? Think very hard and closely with this, this one. These are, all, this is, these are all real. Just kidding, no, they're not. But if some of you understand the references for this, you understand who made them. And that specific person's an engineer. And you can go back to our previous live lessons to learn more about this specific engineer. All right. What was the name of the device made by the young engineers from San Diego last time? Edith, Jarvis, Fred, or Friday? Not gonna lie, this was my favorite question. 97 of you <laughs> answered Fred, and I'm impressed. Some of you answered actually Jarvis, that was cool. And uh, I'm assuming that those 27 that answered Edith understand that uh, reference from another superhero, as well as Friday. Okay, let's see who's in the lead. All right, what number is... Ooh, Smiling Pigeon! And you are on a roll! Mighty Dingo, Glowing Alpaca. Hey, you are still catching up, but we have a new person in the run, Agile Crab. And the crab is definitely showing that itself as agile. Okay, last question. In what stage of the engineering design process do we think of solutions to the problem? Remember, we're thinking of solution. Is it red triangle plan? Is it blue diamond create? Is it orange circle ask? Is it green square imagine? You might want to think a little bit more into this one. In what stage of the engineering design process do we think? I'll give you a little hint. We use our imagination. Oops, uh-oh. Um, do we think of solutions to the problem? Is it red triangle plan? Is it blue diamond create? Is it orange circle ask? Or is it green square imagine? This is kind of like a bingo game. You have the uh, free space. All right, last time. In what stage of the engineering design process do we think of solutions to the problem? Plan, create, ask, or imagine? In what stage? They're all valid stages, but only one of them we really think a lot. All right, we're almost there. We're going to find out. Ooh, wow. Okay, imagine. So that's all right. We're going to find out who our top contestants and our top three are. Helpful Dove, congratulations. Knowing Lobster, 
And our champion for this afternoon, Agile Crab. Wow, what a comeback. Runners up, we have Wonder and Captain. Okay, so congratulations to our friends. That leads me to this next spot that's right here. I'm excited to introduce you. For, and that is, if you like what we did today and you want to keep learning more, please be sure to go to our Innovation Instructional YouTube channel. That's right. Our moderators are going to put those links up in the chat. And there you will find more hands on STEM and STEAM activities that all of our team has done for this school year. And which you can build and create anytime you want. Now, I'm also going to ask you for a specific favor. If your parents or if you're old enough to have a YouTube or a, an account to subscribe, please subscribe. As you can see, we only have 31 subscribers right now. We want more, all right? We want to make sure that you have notifications of when the videos are uploaded. So that way you're not always have to, having to search for them. And they're really cool. If you enjoyed last week's event with Miss Quiroz from the Living Coast, you get to see a, a really cool animals. And that leads me to this next part right here. Next week, everyone, next week, I am so excited to introduce my friend and colleague, Mrs. Hughes. She is going to show you how to build a wind-powered car. That's right, a wind-powered car. That's going to be next Friday, January 22nd at 1 p.m. at the same innovation channel and the same innovation place. Ask your teachers for the link, all right? So I leave you with that, everyone. Have a great Friday and a great three-day weekend. Enjoy it. And we will see you here next Friday with our energy station. Take care. Bye.